What's up and good afternoon everyone. Welcome back to another video. Today we'll be showing you how to do a proper ceramic coating on your vehicle. To get the video started off, we'll be using this 4Runner as an example. This vehicle is in for a three year ceramic coating, and we do have a one year, three year, and seven year. First things first, let's talk about the steps that you need in order to do a ceramic coating. And when I say prep is key, I cannot stress that enough. When prepping your vehicle, that is the number one thing you should spend the most time on and focus before you lay down the coating. To put that in perspective, you can be using like the best ceramic coating out on the market versus the worst ceramic coating. I think if you have a vehicle, that has the horrible prep work done versus a vehicle that has great prep work. If you put that great coating on the one that has bad prep work, it will not outlast the one that has good prep work. I don't know if that made sense, but you guys get the gist. So step number one would essentially be to pull the vehicle out and do a two bucket wash. Get all that dirt off the paint before you do anything and that'll be able to give you a surface to where you move on to step number two, which would be using an iron removal such as Owner's Pride Decon X, which is an iron removal. Cool stuff about this is you can use it as a clay loop too for any of your decon washes. And I'll show you guys more about that later in a future video. But I like to use the Eco Wash as my soap and clay lube. Like I said, use their OP Decon X, do a full iron removal, meaning spray it on the surface and let it dwell for a little bit, then rinse it off. But for those of you that want to use it as a clay lube, like I said, stay tuned for a future video where I'll make a video specific on that. And when you're using Decon X, you can use it out in the sunlight, but just do not let it dry. And what I would do in that kind of situation would be do panel by panel. Set on this fender, spray it on there, watch it dwell, rinse it. Go to this door, keep moving your way forward until you're done with the vehicle. Spend time on that step because those little iron contaminants in the paint will get in the way of that ceramic coating when you're starting to lay it down, which will cause a weak bond. Remember, the way a coating works is that it bonds to the clear coat or cross-link into it to make that strong form to create that sacrificial layer of protection. So you want the cleanest surface possible before putting down that coating. And after decon wash, I would pull it into the shop or garage, whatever you have available to you. And then you move on to your paint correction phasing, where you can do either a one stage, you can do a polish, whatever your vehicle needs is what you would have to do. What we did to this 4Runner was just a nice little one step enhancement. It was pretty easy to work with. Toyota paint is very, very friendly. It's not too soft. It's not like a hard as a rock. It's actually really easy to polish out. And if you guys are familiar with my channel, you would know that I like to use Shine Supply for all my polishes and compounds. I have so many different options for you. You can mix and match them to where you get the perfect combination. So what I used on this vehicle was a blue foam HDO pad from Lake Country, paired up with Shine Supply Classic Polish with one dot of Classic Cut. As you can tell, it looks pretty good. Check that out. And I'll put a little clip before this to show you guys like the little before and after. I didn't necessarily 50-50 on this door to that door. That color was just completely changed and I'll be sure to put that right here and right now. So now that you have your paint polished out to perfection, you've now created a level surface for that coating to sit flat on. That creates the tightest bond possible for that coating, and then you get maximum results right there. So like I said, spend the majority of your time prepping the vehicle, go through that decon wash, get all the iron minerals out, get any water spotting out, then go through and polish your paint. And this will, you'll thank me later when after doing all these steps because of how much better that coating will perform. So you've done the first three steps, meaning you've done the two bucket wash, you've done your decon iron removal, you did your polishing. Now you're on the final steps before you lay down the coating. Step four would be to go through with your panel prep, meaning some sort of alcohol wipe. We like to use owner's pride panel prep right here. We got the stuff in stock for you guys. If you want more of this product, feel free to email me at genesisdetailingsd at gmail.com or shoot me a follow on Instagram and a DM at genesisdetailing. What panel prep will do to the paint after you're done polishing is strip any sort of oils or polishes left behind on the paint, allowing that coating to go straight to the clear coat. If you have any of those oils behind, that coating will lay down sticky. It will not bond. You have contaminants in the way. 
Remember, a coating needs a fresh, clear coat. It needs a clean surface to bond to, and by doing all this stuff, you're allowing that coating to get such good bonding, which will give you, like I said, the best results possible. You gone through the entire vehicle, it's perfected, it's stripped down, there's no oils or waxes left behind. Now you're ready to do the coating. Now, here's the fun stuff. And check out these awesome shirts made by OP, the American flag, proudly made in the USA. And if you guys wanna go see my last video, we hosted an owner's by detailing clinic where we kinda of went through all the product line and we used the coating in person. So it gave the details the opportunity to learn from the best of the best out there. And we actually had the owner of Owner's Pride come down and show us the product behind the scenes and how to be more efficient with their products. So we got their bottle here. I don't have a glove, I'm out of stock. So I'm using this napkin just to wrap it around, but just to show you guys, here's the Owner's Pride ceramic coating. This is their three year coating right here. And yeah, we took out the Soap Joe's air freshener out of this Tundra. And we got to replace it with that new GD air freshener. Check those out. We'll be having those in stock as well soon. Those are being made as we're speaking. We finally picked up the flavor that we wanted. Well, not flavor, the scent. Kind of a flavor, just don't eat them. I forgot to mention, after you do that panel prep, be sure to go through the door jams. Clean up those cracks and crevices, especially like right here, because you'll get compound and polishing dust all up in there. And if that gets in between that coating, you'll start to mar the surface. So go through and wipe down everything, all the nicks and crannies. Get close to those little like corners, you know. Get all that stuff out of there because you want a perfect finish. You do not want to scratch your paint when doing a coating. It's ready for coating time. Let's go over this. I got three towels here. You got a teal one, black one, and a teal one. I like to use three towels when I'm doing ceramic coatings. Two is what you really need, but the third one is if you want to go that extra step. The first one will be my initial wipe, bulk down the coating and level it. Second one will be to refine any sort of haze left behind. The third one just to be that extra step to make sure you didn't miss anything. And if you do miss anything, it's very noticeable. That kind of separates a good coating from a bad coating. You'll see little high spots everywhere. It looks like kind of a rainbow effect or a dullness spot. That's because that coating was not wiped off and it hardened on the surface. So I like to use three towels, step one, two, and three. I always put the third one on the windshield just so I don't mix it up with my first wipe. And when you're doing this, be sure to wear gloves. Don't do what I'm doing, it's not good. I literally am out of gloves, so there's not much I can do besides to hold that thing until I go buy gloves tomorrow. Okay, cool. So you got your applicator pad, you got your coating in your hand. You wanna prime the pad before you do anything. This will allow the coating, the applicator to get a nice even surface. Squeeze it together, you'll get a nice little, so now it's all even. If your applicator has a dry spot, imagine like a microfiber towel that's just wiping off behind all that coating you're putting. So now that you have it nice and primed, you wanna start in a straight line. You wanna work your way down that paint. So remember, as you're working down though, this part will not be as thick as that part. So you wanna add more coating to your front, to your applicator and keep working around it. Once you get that even surface, I like to go back and always cross hatch it. What I mean cross hatch is now that I went in straight lines this way, I'm gonna go straight lines up and down. Add more to the product, to the applicator, and work your way through this part. So you can already see it's starting to bond, so I gotta be ready to start, to start wiping right when I'm done. So go through, and just quickly hit this part right here. Do not miss. And go through and do one more pass up and down. And guys, I'm not putting any pressure, I'm letting the pad do its thing working so now that it's on the paint now we're gonna wait for it to sweat when I mean sweat it's gonna form tight little beads and that's how you know where it's gonna wipe be ready to wipe off that means the solvent is now being released and the coating will be bonded to the clear coat so you can see right there let me get this to focus it's basically ready to be wiped off I get a couple more seconds you can see right there that spot is very beading all right there you go check that out it is very beaten up. So you grab our first towel, as mentioned in the beginning. Put your first towel, lightly wipe it off. You're trying to level it off right now. You don't want to put any pressure and cause any marring or towel marks. You'll see, I'll show you guys after this real quick. So imagine using one towel. You'll see that there are some high spots. Let me show you what the high spots look like. Right about there. Let me see if that'll pick up on camera. See that right here? Use that light bulb and follow them with that. See that right there? That's a high spot. So now that's where we go back with our second towel and remove those high spots. 
And when you're wiping off, be sure to go further than what you applied. Cause that coating does push over to the next panel. For example, if I coated only to here, that first wipe would have pushed it to there. So always go over a little bit 50, like 50% 50 more than what you wiped. So you should be very thorough. So you don't miss. And then I like to go through my third towel and just do one quick final wipe to ensure that I did not miss. So there you have it. You've got your one, two, three step. You got no more high spots, just super glossy. And that coating is now locked in. So we're gonna work our way around the vehicle. We're gonna, we're gonna do it panel by panel, show you guys as we're going. Let's do a little time lapse here. And look, this is why you wanna wear gloves. Look at the coating is leaking into that paper towel. That could be all in your hands, which is not good. And as we're watching this video, if you have any questions or like I've lost you in some sort of terms, please feel free to leave a comment down below of any questions you guys have. I'll be more than happy to answer you guys' questions and kind of help you. That's why I'm here. I'm making this video to help you guys get a better understanding of how to do a ceramic coating. It's not that scary as some people make it seem. It's not impossible. Anyone can really do it if you just study the material and understand what each thing does and why it does what it does. So yeah, if I'm losing you, please pause the video, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. If you have anything, if you want to talk to me more in depth, go on Instagram, follow us at Genesis Detailing, shoot me a DM with any questions that you have, and I'll be more than happy, as I said, to answer your question. It's not that hard to ceramic coat a car. It just takes a matter of time and patience. That's what you're basically paying for. It takes me eight to 10 hours to do an entire vehicle from start to finish. It's a two-day process. This car got dropped off on Monday. It's Tuesday right now and tomorrow the car will be delivered. So once the coating is applied, we like to let it sit inside the shop where it is away from any sort of like dew or like elements falling on it. So it stays clean, allows that coating to get a full cure before it's being driven out in the open. But I'm doing my best to kind of explain this process as dummy termed as I can. I'm not saying you guys are dumb. I'm just saying for me, I'm, I don't want to use all the scientific terms like silica carbide coatings versus silica dioxide. It's not what this is for. This is made for a DIY to go in here. Not even DIY, a professional. This is how we do it on a customer's vehicle. So whether you're a DIY or, or a professional, this is the process that we do of how to ceramic coat your car. A little tip that I always like to recommend to like even Jacob who works with us. I always try to acknowledge that you want to switch towels throughout the process. Do a step down thing. So towel one, two, and three, halfway through the car, make towel number two, go to towel number one, 
and they tile number three, you're gonna tile number two and grab a new third tile. This will keep that tile fresh and be able to take off the coating nice and easy without having to get that thing drenched in coating because it does build up on the towel and you can kind of feel it. It gains its weight, but this is just the way we like to do it. All right, we finished applying the coating. We're gonna go through it one more time with our inspection light. Make sure we didn't miss any high spots. Do not rush this process. It's a time consuming process. That's what it's meant to be. You have to have patience, be very thorough, and be OCD. Whether you're using OP coating or you're using some like Adams Polishes coating, this process should be pretty similar or almost the same. You're always gonna to want to do your decon. You're always gonna to have to do your two buckets, then panel wipe and then apply the coating. The only thing I would just say that might be different is a flash time of the coating. Being able to let it sit on there for a little bit longer than usual or having to wipe it off immediately. And even with like OP coating, as I said, this car flashed really fast as for that Avalon. It kind of gave you some more time. And we have the majority of the products that you need to do this process besides just the paint corrections. And I'll put a link to Shine Supplies website right here for you guys as well. We have all our applicators in stock. We have our soaps we have our decon iron removal and our panel prep so feel free to hit me up if you guys are interested i have started a new instagram for this entire retail side called and gd auto supplies so please give us a follow stay tuned for more little videos of how to use each product and tips and tricks to them but if you guys are interested in buying them shoot me a dm once you got your car ceramic coated, now it's just easy maintenance from there. You're going to love your life. Car stays clean for longer, stays super slick. Time to wrap up this video. If you guys did like this video, please give me a nice thumbs up. Press subscribe. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. If I missed out on something, also just let me know if I skipped a step or something like that. But that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.